In the last video, we saw how to describe an expression that we were already looking at. In this video, we're going to see how to write down an expression given its description. So let's say we have this description. Let's say we're told the sum of four and twice a number. And we're asked to write this as an expression. So looking at this, the first thing I want to do is decide, is this a phrase or a story? And looking at this, well, I don't see any verbs, right? In this case, I'm looking at a phrase. OK, that means that the first operation should happen last. So the operation that happens last is going to be addition because of this word sum. I need to know the sum of what two things. Now, to figure out where the sum is divided up, well, I say the sum of one thing and another. So I'm going to find the and that goes with the word sum. Then this is going to describe one expression, and this is going to describe another. OK, so the first of the things I'm adding together is 4. That's easy twice a number. Twice means two times. So two times a number, whatever letter I want for my variable. I'll write n. So what did I do? I marked up the sentence to see how the sub-expressions broke down. And now my last step is to rewrite nicely. What do I mean? I'm going to drop unnecessary parentheses. In this example, the multiplication is going to happen first anyway. So I'll just have 4 plus 2n for my expression. The sum of 4 and twice a number, that's 4 plus 2n. Let's work through another example that is also a phrase. So this says the product of the sum of 4 and a number and the difference of 3 and a number. So this is, this is kind of hard to read, right? The first word is the product. So we know we're going to have to multiply. Multiply what? Maybe I can't figure out which and goes with the word product yet. So I'm just going to keep reading along. The product of, well, there's a sum of the next and refers to that sum. So the sum of 4 and a number. So sum of 4 and a number. I'm going to call it x. And, OK, so that and must be the and that goes with product. Right, notice how my arrows don't cross each other. Like parentheses, right, product and sum and the associations don't cross each other. Sum is associated with the and that's closest to it, unless that and is inside a phrase that describes another operation. OK, so I've finished with this green sub-expression. The other sub-expression is the difference of 3 and the same number. So 3 minus the same number. 
Notice I was told it was the same number. That means that both of the letters that I use should be X or whatever letter I picked for the first number. I use it again to represent that same number again. So notice, again, when diagramming the sentence like this, my arrows can't cross. Marking up the sentence is very helpful. This is actually a really terrible way to phrase this. When describing an expression, we should try to avoid using and over and over again. Um, a more natural way to describe this expression would be the product of a number added to 4 and the same number subtracted from 3. So it would be more natural to phrase this so that there's only one use of the word and. That makes for a phrasing that's much, much easier to read. Okay, let's see one more example. The ratio of 5 less than a number to 3 more than another number. Okay, again, the first word for an operation I see. This time it's ratio. Ratio doesn't use the word and. Ratio uses the word two. I remember that ratio means division. And I'm going to write a division bar because that gives me a natural grouping symbol. We very rarely write the divided by sign when variables are involved. We much prefer the division bar for division when there are variables involved. So, the ratio of what to what. The first quantity described is 5 less than a number. So that's going to be x minus 5. Remember that less than phrasing reverses the order. The second expression described is 3 more than another number. Another number means use a different letter. This might be a different number than the first. Let's say y plus 3. More than also reverses the order, but that's not such a big deal because order doesn't really matter in addition. So notice when we said the same number, that means use the same variable. When we said another number, that means use a different variable. Okay, so that's expressions described with a phrase. Let's say you were given a narrative describing an expression and asked to write the expression down. Here we're told a number is added to 2 thirds. The result is multiplied by 3. Then that result is subtracted from 6. So this is a story, right? It's got all these verbs in it. Fairly boring verbs, but still. And uh, several sentences, and it, it forms a story. So a number is added to 2 thirds. Notice I've written this kind of in the middle of the page. I'm going to build up my expression gradually. The result, that's this whole thing, is multiplied by 3. I'm going to write the 3 in front of the parentheses because that looks nicer. Then that result, this whole thing, is subtracted from 6. So we've got 6 minus this whole thing. OK, we're done. All that's left is to rewrite it without any unneeded parentheses. Right? These brackets aren't needed because the multiplication is going to happen first anyway. So we've just got 6 minus 3 times x plus 2 thirds. And that's all there is to it. In a lot of ways, these narratives are easier to write down an expression from. But we'll often use the phrases because we're planning to build up some more complicated sentences.